we set aside every Sunday to look at Bible prophecy. We believe that we are living in what the Bible describes as the last days. And we believe that because of Israel and how that Israel is God's prophetic clock. For today's update, I want to complete part two of a teaching that we started last week on the rise of Islam and the role of Islam as it relates to the future of Islam. Now, last week we looked at the past, the history of how it all started and by whom it was started. And then we also looked at Islam presently. And in so doing, we're, Lord willing, today going to see how that Islam will come full circle in how it fits into the final prophetic program. I would suggest that, at best, Islam plays a most prominent role, and at worst, Islam plays a dominant role in the Antichrist's one world religion during the seven year tribulation. See, the Bible's description of a one world religion seems to have within it, woven into the fabric of it, these pronounced Muslim components, if I can say it that way. And this in turn places Islam at the center of this one world, this final one world religion under the control of the Antichrist. Even in Islam's eschatology, eschatology is a fancy word that makes it sound like I went to seminary, which I didn't, just makes me sound like I'm smart, doesn't it? Especially the way I say it, eschatology. Wow, that's impressive, Pastor. What, is, what does it mean? It's just a study of last day's events. And in Islam's eschatology, they teach that this 12th imam, their Muslim messiah, will come and bring peace for a period of, listen, seven years. Sound familiar? This is documented in the writings of Ibn Khaldun al-Muqaddimah. Easy for me to say, right? He says, quote, there will come forth a man from my nation who will talk according to my sunnah. God will send upon him rain from heaven and the earth will sprout forth for him its blessing. The earth will be filled through him with equity and justice as it has been filled with injustice and crime. He will direct, speaking of this figure, this Mahdi, he will direct the affairs of this nation for seven years and he will settle in Jerusalem. By the way, just for the record, the name Jerusalem is not once mentioned in the Quran. Jerusalem is the most mentioned city in the pages of scripture and Islam has manufactured this claim on Jerusalem and they have no claim, they have no Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the eternal city, it belongs to God and by the way, anyone who tries to mess with Jerusalem, big boo-boo as we say in my home. I know that's very theologically profound, but <laughs> that's the JDV, a big mistake. The religious writings of Islam have prophecies foretelling the coming of this hidden imam, same as the Mahdi, as he's known to either the Sunni or Shiite Muslim. Uh, one such writing, comes from a book called the Hadith. The Hadith is a collection of the words and deeds 
of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. We were introduced to him uh, last week in part one of this teaching. I want to share with you five prophecies about this coming of this Mahdi that are foretold in the Hadith, the first of which is that he will be a descendant of Muhammad and the son of Fatima. Now, for those of you who were with us last week, uh, that fills in quite a few blanks and connects quite a few dots as well. Here's the second prophecy. He will return just before the end of the world. In other words, seven years before. Uh, three, he will eradicate all tyranny and oppression, bringing harmony and total peace. If that sounds like the prophecies in the book of Daniel, it's probably because that sounds like the prophecies in the book of Daniel. Namely, uh, the prophecy that the Antichrist will, through peace, one translation renders it very accurately. Through his craft or policy, he will cause peace to prosper. In other words, peace for this man will be the catalyst for which he will bring all the destruction. Number four, this, this one's going to get your blood boiling. He will lead a prayer in Mecca with Jesus at his side following him. Really? <laughs> That's not my Jesus. <laughs> if there's a Jesus following him, it's not my Jesus. He might be maybe from Mexico. Jesus, I don't know. I, I mean, please, I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> I remember as a kid, freaked me out when I saw the name Jesus, you know, down below on the TV screen. And here's this you know, Mexican man with that name. I'm thinking, oh, that's Jesus? My mom had to sit me down, settle me down, and calm me down and let me know, no, that's just a common name. Anyway, all right, let's look to the last, the last one, the fifth one. Why did I go there? I don't know. He will rule over the world for seven years. These are the prophecies concerning the coming of this Mahdi. Now, all of this begs the question of whether or not the Antichrist of the Bible and the Mahdi of the Quran and the Hadith are one and the same. If so, then we need look no further than what's being called Chrislam. What's Chrislam? Well, you'll be hearing more about it in the not too distant future. It's already starting to find its way into Christendom, its tentacles now reaching throughout the churches in the United States of America. Uh, Chrislam is a marriage of a form of Christianity and Islam as they now come together under the banner of worshiping the same God. Then President George W. Bush surely did not help matters any when he went on record as the President of the United States and of Islam said that Muslims worship the same God as Christians. Well, let me just go on record and say, Allah is not the same as Jehovah. He is a false god. He is the moon god, and he is not our god. Now, this is where and this is why Islam seemingly comes full circle in that it will attempt to bring together all the world's religions as one. For the benefit of those who weren't with us last week, we, in the history of Islam, in terms of the past of Islam, learn that Muhammad in the 7th century AD brought together, or at least attempted to bring together, the Jews and the Christians under the banner of 
a new religion, a one world religion called Islam. That was his original intent, was to form a religion that would become the all-encompassing religion bringing Jews and Christians together in the seventh century. Now, when the Jews and Christians rejected Islam, which they did, then Muhammad turned on the Jews and the Christians, and we're going to see that come into play as we talk now about where it goes from here. It's really a question of Islam's prominent presence in the world's religions that coexist under the rule of this Antichrist for seven years. By the way, Antichrist does not only mean against Christ, it also means in the place of Christ. You have to understand that this figure, this Messiah, this Christ will be received as the Savior of the world, which is why he will rule the world. Now, we talked about this campaign of coexist last week, and I want to sort of get into some of the details of it because it's germane to our understanding of the role of Islam in the future prophetic program. Now, again, notice that the crescent uh, and star of Islam are at the beginning, the C at the beginning, and the Catholic cross at the end of this coexist. But did you know that this O is the pentagram of Wicca, also known as the peace sign? Did you know that the peace sign is a satanic symbol of an upside down broken cross. Uh, <laughs> young people, you might want to revisit some of the music that you're listening to because you're going to see this peace sign all over the place. Uh, some of you uh, older people, and I say that affectionately, <laughs> because I am you, and in our day, we had a certain band by the name of Blue Oyster Cult. Do you remember them? Oh yeah, some of you are having flashbacks right now. I'll give you a moment. Come back, you back? All right, hello. God bless you, welcome back. Here's the deal. Do you remember their symbol? It was a cross with a question mark. The common denominator in a lot of this satanic symbolism found in everything from music to movies and all forms of entertainment and religions is that it will always blaspheme, it will always question, it will always demean the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, which is actually what validates and authenticates the finished work on the cross. Because as I hope you know by now, because I've been saying it over and over again, week in and week out, that you will never find a counterfeit $4 bill because there's no such thing as a genuine $4 bill. That's why there are no anti-Buddhas or false Mohammeds there are only false Christs. There are only crosses that are upside down and broken. I've yet to see a Buddha upside down. You know, with, anyway, I'll let your imagination run wild with that one. Not, don't go too far with that one. But anyway, as you go through this 
coexist, and there's some debate as to what the E is, but of course the X is the Star of David, and the I, the Buddhist Dharma, is seen in the wheel with the, that's dotting the I. You have Taoism, and of course at the end you have the Catholic cross, and really everything in between. This is now subtly, satanically, what we see taking place. I like how one website rearranged it to say that the coexist bumper sticker should just be C-O-E-X-I-S and then the cross. Because there can only be one absolute truth, one true religion. Does that sound like our teaching in the book of Romans? Stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. Oh, sorry, you young people, don't touch the remote. <laughs> I don't know if you do what I do, but I, I'm always telling my kids, back when I was your age, we didn't have remote control. We had three channels. We had to get up and turn that dial, you know. Anyway, just enough of my problems. Anyway, one true religion worshiping one real God, or there will be confusion. <laughs> Look at all the symbols. And contradiction since confusion and contradiction are the results of amalgamating contradictory beliefs. Who's the author of confusion? Lucifer himself. He's really called three things in the scriptures, the accuser of the brethren, the father of lies, and the author of confusion. And he lives up to all three. It's starting to look to me like Islam and Catholicism with all the world's religions will coexist under the rule of the Antichrist for seven years. Now I think the jury is still out and again as a believer and knowing that the rapture has to happen before the seven year tribulation the church has to be removed before the Antichrist can be revealed. So I'm not looking for the Antichrist, thank you very much. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. But there are other compelling reasons why some Bible prophecy may in fact find its fulfillment in the increasing growth and prominence of Islam. Uh, one is that what's taking place in Ahmadinejad's nuclear Iran is, I believe, about to, uh, <laughs> poor choice of words, it's about to explode. We are on the cusp. In the news every day, all day, is what are we going to do with Iran? And it sure doesn't help when we give them one of our drones and let them keep it. We don't want to, you know, make, you know, we don't want to destroy it, which they could, because that would be pro provocative and a, an act of war. Are you kidding me? <laughs> don't get me started. I can get me started myself without any help. That is just absurd. That is insanity. Listen, church, I, I hope you know this. Don't be ignorant. Islam wants to destroy us. They want to kill us. They have waged jihad against us. You know what jihad is? Holy war. They have already waged war on us, but we don't want to talk. Oh, that's a, hey, let's, let's, uh, anyway, I'm doing it. I said I wouldn't. I won't. In Jesus' name, self-control of the Holy Spirit. Listen, <laughs> Iran has the propensity to play a key role in this end times scenario and we see in Daniel 9 27 where the Antichrist will confirm a seven-year peace agreement with Israel and 
Here's the thing. Ahmadinejad believes that he's the one who has been called and commissioned to usher in this Muslim Mahdi, this Messiah, if you will, who will rule the world for a period of seven years. He believes he's the one. He's the forerunner. And then that fits with Ezekiel 38 and 39, which tell us of this Islamic alliance of nations who will launch this nuclear attack against Israel. And Ahmadinejad's nuclear ambitions for Iran are as clear as his chummy relationship with Putin's Russia. He's back in the news again. I wish he would put his shirt back on. Just saying. Have you seen this? Crazy. They're all protesting now. He wants to be president again. <gasps> surprise, surprise. I'm doing it again. Let's move on. Psalm 83 prophesies that they will say, come and let us wipe them out as a nation that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Ahmadinejad has in his A World Without Zionism Forum said virtually verbatim these exact words in his declaration to wipe Israel off the map. Well, there's one final factor that I want to uh, put into the equation, and it's one for which we'll go ahead and bring this prophecy update in for a landing with. It's Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 and 5, where we read John writing that he saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And he says, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Who, who are these saints that were beheaded? These are what are called the tribulation saints, not the church. This is during the tribulation. We're not here during the tribulation. These are those who reject the mark of the Antichrist and because of it, they're beheaded. Interesting. Beheaded? Well, consider the Islamic writing found in Surah chapter 8, verse 12 and 17. Quote, I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. Smite ye above their necks, and smite all their fingertips off them. It is not ye who slew them, it was Allah. There's been a recent uh, revival of sorts as it relates to beheading. You might remember back in 2004, an American Jew by the name of Daniel Pearl was beheaded. Oh, but these are Muslims that have hijacked a peace-loving religion. No, they're not. These are obedient Muslims to the commands of the Quran. There are 123, one has counted probably more verses in the Quran that say and command the Muslim to strike terror in the hearts of the infidel, namely the Jew and the Christian. And the way they're to do it is to behead them, and that's what they've been doing. And that's what they will likely be doing during the tribulation. There was Kim Sun Il, who wanted to be a missionary and was beheaded as an evangelical Christian. And there are many others who were and still are, and yet future will be beheaded according to the commands by Muslims out of their obedience to the Quran. As it turns out, beheading is a sacred Muslim practice dating back to the seventh century with none other than Muhammad himself. 
And I would submit to you that it looks like it's going to now be commonplace in the 21st century. And sadly, under the banner of political correctness, I believe we're seeing this as evidenced by one news source who reported on this recent shooting in Hollywood. You hear about this? Guy just opens fire at an intersection and shoots people there in Hollywood. Now, listen to what this one news story said about it. What's most disturbing about this story, apart from the obvious horror, is that not one news account reported what one witness said the shooter was screaming. Allah u Akbar. And by the way, Akbar does not mean great. Allah u Akbar does not mean Allah is great. It means Allah is greater. As a young boy, I used to play my grandfather a Jordanian uh, card game, kind of like our uh, American bridge, I guess it would be similar to that. And he would always beat me. And he would always say, because I would speak Arabic with him, and he would always say, Ana Akbar. My score was higher. Now, why is that significant? Because does that not sound like Ezekiel, Lucifer? See, so you change the, the whole meaning of it when you say greater, great, because the implication is greater than whom? The Most High God. Is that not what Lucifer said? I will ascend my throne higher, greater, akbar than the Most High. This was a Muslim. He's screaming, Allahu Akbar, and not one news account. I watched the video, and eyewitness said he was screaming this as he was shooting people. He was repeatedly screaming, Allahu Akbar, and it's in the video, and you can see it on YouTube. And this video was on the LA Times news story, but not one reporter dare say it. Nobody mentions it. Reuters, CBS News, The Hollywood Reporter, et al. Nobody wants to say that this man was a Muslim. It probably shouldn't come as any surprise that the Obama administration would call the Fort Hood massacre workplace violence and not Islamic jihad. They won't call this uh, Muslim uh, at, at ground zero. They want to call it a, uh, not a, a, a mosque. They want to call it a community center. Doesn't that sound nice? Oh, that's so nice of you. Oh, you want to build a community center? Oh, how, how thoughtful. What a gruesome note to end on, huh? <laughs> Maybe I can bring in the good news concerning this because as believers, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And Jesus in Luke 21, 28 said, when you see these things, I believe he was describing these things that we're now seeing, when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or you're not sure of your salvation, then I need to quote John 14, 29 for you. And you need to take this to heart. This is Jesus himself. He says, now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. In other words, 
Jesus is saying, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen before it happens, so when it happens, you will believe. Listen, what's happening, we were told would be happening. It shouldn't be a surprise to us. It shouldn't catch us off guard as a thief in the night. This is so that you will believe God's word is true. I would really encourage you, especially if you're unsure, that today you would make sure. Would you pray with me? Father, we're ever so thankful to you for the more sure word of Bible prophecy. Lord, I pray that you'll take all of this information, and there was certainly a lot of it, and build the needed application into our hearts and into our lives. Lord, we need for you to do this. Otherwise, these prophecy updates are to no avail, and our time is in vain. Lord, we pray that not be. In Jesus' name, amen.